know my name is Milantin and I'm from marketing. Today is Hilda Harba, who is the MD School of Insurance. We also have Wadia Dramat, who is the, um, sorry, our program manager. So today the We'll be talking to you about our location, the Pidget Differential Planning. And before we get to them, I would just like to do a bit of housekeeping aside. On the right hand screen, you will know to add to box. Bill already said good morning. So uh, if we can just say hi, tell us where you're from, we would love to hear from you. We also we also have a poll running, um, there's two polls running, we'd like to find out from have more information regarding our courses, particularly this one that we'll be talking about today. And um, if you would like us to register you, to help you get registered for our cycle six intake. And um, yeah, so please um, vote yes or no. <laughs> in any of those polls and if you do vote yes we will be in contact with you and help you through your um, registration process and admissions process uh, we also have a running ask a question box this is at the bottom of the screen so if you have any questions during the session just pop in those questions there and we will um, tackle them um, as we come to the end of the, um, the session. So without wasting more time, I'm kind of over to Brunilda, who will take us through the qualifications and maybe tell us a bit more about herself. So over to you, Brunilda. Thank you very much, Simila. Um, I would just want to ask, please be with us this morning. Uh, we've got load shedding all over. So if you lose us or lose a bit of connection somewhere, just be with us. Um, we're trying our best to, to also deal with that while we're busy with that. So I am just going to share my slides or my screen with you so that I can share my slides with you and then we can kick this off. Okay, I can't see from my side um, if you can see if you can see my slides. Um, I'm not seeing anything from the side, Brunilda. Okay, let me quickly try again. <laughs> Can you see it now? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much everyone for joining us this morning. I do see that we have some already existing students on here. The aim of this session this morning is mainly for new students, but there will be some interesting information for our existing students as well. Good, so just a quick, who are we? Um, we are part of the Stadio groups, and um, you will see that Mill Park has got quite a few schools. Uh, we currently have the Mill Park Business School, the School of Commerce, the School of Investment and Banking, and the School of College, um, and then, of course, our school, um, the School of Financial Planning and Insurance. So quite a big school, or quite a big um, institution, and a lot happening on our side. Then we were established, um, and when I say we, Mill Park was established in 1997, and we've got a very wide range of qualifications and certificates from doctorate level um, and from your NQF4s. 
So um, yes, that we we offer quite a wide range of qualifications. Our current offices are in Cape Town um, for the School of Financial Planning and Insurance in Observatory, and we want to provide trusted leading learning journeys with high levels of holistic support that are accessible and transformative. And we look forward um, to partnering with you in your financial planning learning journey. Just in terms of the qualifications specific to our schools, on uh, NQF level four, we have the certificate in financial products. On NQF level five, we have the higher certificates in financial planning, in financial products, and then also a short-term insurance. Then on NQF level six, we have the advanced certificate in financial planning and also the advanced certificate in short-term insurance. Then within the School of Commerce, we also have the BCom with financial planning on NKF level seven. And then we also have a BCom with a major in short-term insurance. And then of course, the reason why we are here today is our postgrad diploma in financial planning on NKF level eight. So why should you study with us? Why should you do your postgrad diploma in financial planning with Mold Park? Um, we offer um, a, a wonderful qualification and our postgrad diploma addresses the educational requirements for the designation of certified financial planner professional and um, which is awarded by the Financial Planning Institute of Southern Africa. And this designation is internationally recognized. And it's also the highest designation for a financial planner in South Africa. So once you've completed um, our postgrad diploma in financial planning, you will be eligible to apply to write the, uh, the FPI's professional competency exam, or as we call it, this, um, the BCE exam, so that you can obtain your CFP certification. Um, just to also mention that our postgrad diploma in financial planning obviously therefore also appears on the financial sector conduct authorities list of recognized qualifications for fit and for the phase fit and proper purposes okay then still why should you study with us um, so our alumni has constantly formed part of the top achievers at the FBI professional competency exams for the CFP professionals. Just um, to also prove this to you, um, we've updated, we've, we've provided some details. So in February of 2020, um, we, we had the first and second place um, with four out of the five candidates in the top five. In August 2020, we took the first, second, third, and fifth place um, out of the top five. In March 2021, we had the second place out of the top five candidates. In September 2020, uh, 2021, we had second and fourth place, and we also had a wonderful pass rate of 68% compared to the overall pass rate of 46%. And in March of this year, we took the first, third, and fifth place in the top five. So we are currently awaiting the new results for the September exams. So then who will be helping you and who, who will be assisting you during your learning journey? That would be myself as the program oversight manager and also um, Wadia Dramat, who will um, also have a word a little, a little bit later on. Our current lecturers on the modules is then myself, Tamsin Gradwell, Jürgen Moller, Peter Wittendal, who's also our head of school, and Gary van der Merwe. Just in terms of the modules on the postgrad in financial planning, you will see that we have split it up into different um, modules. Um, normally, the universities have about four modules up because we found that we wanted to have it in more detail um, for specific areas. So you will see that there is an induction um, to financial planning module, which is non-credit bearing. However, it is compulsory and the lecturer there is Peter Wendell. 
the reason why we do this is to give everyone a short introduction into financial planning to get you familiarized with the system um, and then to just we we look at small things like um the a, a tax overview for instance and also time value of money calculations which are very important so a very important subject even though it is non-credit bearing then we we have the financial planning environment module which is 20 credits all the other modules are there for 20 20 credits and all the modules are compulsory the financial planning environment module um, lecturer is Tams and Gradle. We have the risk and estate planning module, of which I am the lecturer. We have the investment planning module, of which Jürgen Moller is um, the oversight, oh, the, sorry, the lecturer. Um, we also have the corporate financial planning module, of which Gary van der Merwe is the, the lecturer. And then again, the case study at the end, taking everything together and giving you um, the experience of all the modules in one. We um, have Peter Woodendall, that is the lecturer on there. So for um, cycle six in 2022, so for the last, last cycle of this year, what will the um, induction module look like? So it will start in week one with an assignment. In week two, you will have an online test. In week three, another online test. In week four, you have two tests that you need to complete. In week five, an online test. In week six, an online test. Week seven, an online test. And then also in week an, uh, eight, an online test. So this is the only module where there's also no exam. So at the end of your eight weeks, you will immediately be able to get your um, results as you can see them as you move along. So very exciting, the changes we have in mind for 2023. Um, we've decided to make some structural changes to the qualification and how we deliver this module. Um, for those of you that are familiar with Millpark, we used to offer those in eight-week cycles. So there's some changes there that I'll um, touch on in a moment. Um, but just to, to maybe clarify as well why we've decided to make the changes, we have had quite a few students that indicated that the timelines are just too short for some of the modules. Um, so an eight-week cycle was too short to cover all the information, um, especially if you consider that people are working individuals and they have to then spend their time after hours times um, on their qualifications. So we've decided to listen to the students and to make some changes. So the exciting changes for 2023 will be that we will move to five cycles only, no longer six cycles. This will mean that some of our cycles will be nine weeks and some of our cycles will be 10 weeks long, just to give students that extra week or two weeks to get um, familiar with the content of the module before they write the exam. So the induction module will also um, it will just be nine weeks, even though it is still offered in every cycle. So you can still register at any time during the year. You can, can register for the next cycle. So and that will continue as is. We've moved around some of the modules, but then in cycle one for a nine week cycle, we'll have um, corporate financial planning. In cycle two, we will have um, the case study, which is still going to, going to be a 12 week module that is also the only the mod, only um, module that is longer um, and is always 12 weeks long so um, then we also have the financial planning environment um, environment module which will be 10 weeks long and um, investment module which is 10 weeks in then cycle nine we will have your risk and estate planning which is nine weeks your corporate financial planning, which is nine weeks. And then we'll also have the retirement planning module, which is also nine weeks. Then in cycle four, we have the case study again running for 12 weeks. We'll have the investment planning, 
module and the environment module again for 10 weeks. And then in cycle five, we'll have again retirement planning and risk and estate planning for only nine weeks. So we were very excited about this uh, change and the new things that we're trying for next year. And we will we hope that this will um, grant our students the, the necessary time to be even more successful with their studies. So I had a quick, um, I just want to quickly run through what the cycles will look like for next year, um, changing from our normal uh, assignment, test, assignment, test, assignment, test, to um, the nine week cycle. We have got um, cycle one, three, and five. That's going to be nine weeks long. And the only difference there is that we've added in an additional online test in the first week. So we'll have a test in the first week, an assignment in the second week, um, a test again in the third week, the fourth week, an assignment, week five, another online test, and then assignment again in week six. Week seven will have your final test, and then you will have two weeks to prepare for the exam. So, and then you'll write your exam in week nine. So the, then the difference between cycles one, three, and five to cycles two and four, which is a 10 week, is there um, that we've built in into week six. There's just a break week that is just before your assignment. So it gives you a little bit more time to work on your assignment as well. So that is the only change that there is between the cycle nine and 10 weeks is that you've got that extra week in there um, to give special attention to your assignment. Okay, then just for those of you that's not familiar with the course pages, um, a short overview of what it looks like. So you'll see the different tabs on there. On the overview tab, you'll find a welcome note and you'll find some announcements. So those announcements are also linked to your emails. So you should receive an email once we post an announcement on there. The announcements are posted by um, the lecturer, so that would be me, or the online lecturer, um, depending on, on who um, needs to make an announcement. Um, I just want to quickly see, also on the overview page, you will see that we've um, pointed out the weeks for you, so you can see week one, what, what's the dates for week one to week eight. You'll also see the exam date there, we'll give you the release dates of your results, and then we also indicate that when the supplementary exam will be. We also provide you on there with some assessment guidelines that will indicate how much each part of each test or assignment contributes towards your formal mark and how much um, your formal mark counts towards um, your summative mark as well. So, and very, very much, um, very interesting and um, informative information in there that you should take it to read through. We also on there provide you with a study plan indicating what you need to learn for each week um, and when also indicating the dates of the tests, etc., for that specific week. So we've really tried to give you a guidance up front to indicate what is due when and what material you should cover. Then also on the overview tab, you have your tutor forum that we now refer to as the Ask Your Online Lecturer. Um, you will find the, um, the three, you'll see there the Connection Hub has got three icons. It's Meet Your Online Lecturer on there. Um, I will either, well, the lecturer will either introduce the online lecturer or the online lecturer will introduce themselves. In your week before the start of the module, you are welcome to introduce yourself there, tell us a little bit about yourself, and we can make contact with each other that way. Then ask your online lecturer is your tutor forum, as we know it. There you can ask any academic related questions to the online lecturer and they will get back to you within 48 working hours. Okay, then also on there is a connect with other students um, where you can connect with other students also currently on the module. So you're welcome to also then make use of that.
Then the second tab there, you'll find the live at Millpark tab. So on this tab, you will find any dates and times for live sessions. You will also find your links there that you can go and click on to join the live sessions. And in some instances, we also load supporting material on the um, some recordings um, for you to listen at. So after an, a live session, we will also make available the slides of the live session and we will also make available the recording of the live session um, as soon as we can. Then I've just selected their week two. So you'll see each week will look different. Um, so on each week, we give you the topic that we are working on for the week. We give you the objectives that we need to look at for the week and what you should be able to do once the week is done. And then we also provide you with the learning resources. So you will see um, you will have a link there to your, your whichever modules um, study guide or wraparound. Um, that you can access directly from the onto vital source. And then we also provide you with any additional reading that you might need for the week. At the bottom of each week, you will find your formative assessment. So this one I've selected was the online test. When you click on the online test uh, icon there, it will take you to the test and you will be able to write your test. So every week will have its own one. So just an example of what the formative assessment um, or the assignment looks like when you, when you get to that week, you will see that there's assignment instructions that need to be re read. You will see those little ticks there on the, on the right hand side that needs to be ticked before you will be able to actually open your assignment and download anything. So there you can download your assignments. These should be available up front. So you can download them and have them at hand while you work through your material for each week. Then you also have an assignment template that you need to download uh, on which you need to do your assessment. And then you'll see that there's an upload button there where you click on it and you upload your information. You will also then um, when you upload it, we are linked to turn it in. So that will determine whether you have um, are guilty of any plagiarism, plagiarism etc. But more information of that on that is available on your course spaces page as well. Then we also make available the marking guidelines for all the assessments. So these will also then be uploaded um for the assignments on the same tab okay then you will also see that we have now um provided you with a proctorio help tab on there you can go and listen to the lesson plan or read through it see all the troublesho troubleshooting guidelines there um, we get the question very often um, to say that we are getting a password error and then we just refer you to the Proctorio Help tab. On there you will find most of the information that you need uh, in order to cope with Proctorio. For those of you that's not aware what Proctorio is, that is um, our online invigilating system that we use for your some of your tests as well as your exam then. Okay, then you will see that there's also an exam prep tab on there. We will provide you with some additional practice questions, some additional recordings, any additional information that you need to know about the exam or need to look at before the exam, we will upload on there. You will also see that we have a mock exam tab. Again, there you will see that there are some Proctorio things that's uploaded there. You can go onto the mock exam. So the mock exams are normally based on some of the previous exams and it gives you an indication of where you are with your studies. So um, you can go and work through the mock exam. We will also make available a memo for the mock exam. So it's not a, a waste of time. So if you work through it within the given timelines, then you know that you will be ready for the exams, that you will be able to finish your exam. Okay, then we also have the summative assessment tab there. This is where you will write your exam. So you will find on there 
closer to the exam, some exam instruction document that will indicate what is required and necessary for the exam, what you can expect of the exam, and any really other exam related information. We also have there a guideline to technical support so that you know what to look for when you need help during the exam. This will also be discussed during the exam preparation session that we will hold, so not to stress about that. So on this tab, most important thing there is that you will see um, where your exam will be and what to click on um, when you need to write your exam. So it is now my pleasure to introduce to you our program manager, Wadi R. Drummond, who will take this presentation further. I'm not sure if it's just on my side, but I cannot hear Wadia. Hello there, sorry. Can you hear me, Ronaldo? I can, I can hear you, Wadia. I'm going to just switch off my camera and then I'm just going to share the slides again. Thank you. Um, so we just had some technical issues there where the icon was not available. Now it seems that I can't share my slides again. There we go. Can you see the slides now, Wadia? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Thank you, Ramalda. So welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the session. Um, so I'm your program manager um, for the qualification. So you'll be dealing with me throughout the duration of your of your time with Millpark. So basically, my function is that I do um, assist with all the admissions and, and registrations of this qualification. I look at the criteria that has been set out by by the school um, and in terms of what is required for this qualification. Um, I also conduct subject planning for students, so I will look at what they have and then I will provide them with a study plan, which is normally the quickest way of getting them from the start and in induction and to completing the case study module. Um, I also administer in conjunction with Bromilda the RPL policy, um, which we then uh, select RPL students who does not have the um, the qualified or the um, admission requirement uh, required qualification, which is the relevant BCom degree. So that is part of the function. As I said, I do I approve all the registrations as well in line with the at risk policy and rules of the progression. So that is also what we look at. Um, I also consider an action all standard module exemption applications in conjunction with Promolda, which is the HOD of the faculty. Um, I deal with students and client queries. So if, if there's anything that you're uncertain about, if these, uh, maybe you are busy with a qualification or a module and you are sick or there's death in the family and you need to write a test or an exam or anything that you just need some clarity on, you'll then be able to directly email me and I will respond. I also ensure that students' complaints and concerns are solved, um, are resolved to, um, you know, to student satisfaction, whether it is to send it to an academic committee to have a, maybe have a look at it further, or even to provide you with a, with some, um, some help from our, um, 
Panama's esteemed um, psychology department um, for assistance. Um, the next slide, Bramilda, please. Okay. So just a little bit about me. I've been with the institution for quite a long time, um, 16 years. Um, I've worked in sales before I became a program manager on this qualification. So I'm very passionate about, about education and about seeing our students succeed and reaching their goals, um, you know, qualifying and, and obtaining the certificates. Um, I'm passionate about my, my academics and our online lecturers, the people involved who has created this qualification and who every day we try to and we aspire to obviously make things better as we go along. Hence the fact that we've also tried um, changing from the six cycles to the five cycles. So it's listening to the students and trying to make things um, better for everyone. Okay, so admission requirements. Sorry, I was just reading Mark was saying he couldn't hear us. Um, in terms of the admission requirements, so the admission requirement, the minimum admission requirements for the postgrad diploma in financial planning is an appropriate bachelor's degree, um, which was on the old NQ of level six, which is now on the new um, NQ of level seven. Um, and then also a pass in matric with the maths, uh, with mathematics on a higher grade or a C symbol on standard grade um, or equivalent is also required. Relevant post matric studies, which demonstrate familiarity with the mathematical with mathematical abilities required will also be considered. Applicants are requested to um, submit a detailed CV as well as an employer's letter, which is which forms part of the um, curriculum planning and the study plan, which I then provide students um, on acceptance of the qualification. So students who does not have an extensive experience in financial planning will be required to complete the qualification over a, a minimum period of two years. In line with our admission policy, applicants with insufficient no or outdated tax knowledge may also be admitted on condition that they pass the two first modules, which would be induction to financial planning and the financial planning environment module. And upon successful completion of those two modules, will they then be allowed to continue with the qualification? In terms of our RPLs or our recognition of prior learning students, Mill Park admits a small number, a small number of students onto this program. So students applying via this route, there is no guarantee when students apply that acceptance is or acceptance is not automatic um, when students apply. And this is basically students um, applying with the NQ of level five and six in financial planning. Remember, this is a financial planning specific qualification, and therefore we require financial planning specific um, NQ of level five and six qualifications to be considered for RPL purposes. Next slide, please. Okay. As I said, on admission, students will be advised of the proposed study plan, which is on your admission approval letter. Um, as I said, it will be the quickest way from getting to induction to getting to case study and then and complete. Um, if a student has not completed tax, as we said, at on at least the income level six level, it will be expected of him or her to complete the financial planning environment module. The retirement, okay, so then we have only one prerequisite on this qualification, and that is that retirement planning must be completed before investment planning. Or at least if you have attempted in retirement planning, you may register for investment planning. Okay. And then we also suggest or we would like students to complete investment planning module before they complete the case study module. So that would all be um, in your study plan provided. The case study module may not be attempted unless all other modules have been completed or have been passed, completed passed. Students can only register for one module per cycle. So in our five cycles, so one module can be done. Um, and that is not open for debate, unfortunately. And then 
we also have funding so if you have any issues with funding or that you cannot get a bursary from your company you're welcome to go on our system on our website we have with in conjunction with capitec we have um ask them for assistance so you can go in you can ask for a loan which the maximum that they will provide is 250,000 over a period of 84 months which which you can then pay back so this will allow you then to complete your study so whether you're busy with the first module or the second module and these do not have funding please go on and log in so nobody has a reason to say I'd love to do the qualification but unfortunately I'm not able to with this you can Okay, so based on all of this, we would like to see you. Our next intake is coming up. Registrations or admissions are closing on the 18th of October and the module commences our first module, which would be induction if you are admitted, come, um, commences on the 25th of October until the 13th of December. So we are looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next cycle. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to uh, navigate on one screen here. Thank you very much, Wadia. Um, I think we'll have a look at some of the questions mm -hmm. now. And um, I'm not sure if Wadia was able to answer some of them while I was busy. Um, so we'll just have a look at some of these questions. Okay. I see there's a question from Mark regarding, I think that he's referring to exemptions from older. How does Milpar compensate for the qualifications when compared with the same qualification, but from a varsity, which normally carries more esteem or, and recognition? Okay, so because we've split up the modules, we do look at all those modules when we grant any um, extensions. So um, just very important to, to keep in mind when we grant extensions, we cannot grant extensions for more than 50% of the qualification. So, but we do look at all those modules and what is covered in other institutions as well compared to our modules as well. If I can just add on to what Bramilda is saying, just in terms of um, the exemptions, we do not provide or we do not grant exemptions on the induction module, nor on the investment planning and case study modules. Unfortunately, any other modules, but not on those three. Thank you very much, Wadia. Um, what if we over 65, must we rewrite maths if we don't have a C in standard grade? Um, no we would look obviously qualification is obviously the first port of call which we look in when we do admissions so it's qualification and then we look at years of experience so you would not be required to complete or rewrite your maths to to gain entry onto the qualification Let's see any other questions Don't okay. see anything there. I'm not seeing any more questions, <clears throat> but what I would like to urge everyone who is on this call is um, just to remind you that we've got our, our polls running and I see um, some people have um, casted their votes. And thank you so much to those who will be in touch with you. And if you have not yet seen, we are currently running polls um, at the bottom of your screen and would like to find out if you would want us to contact you regarding more information on our, on our courses. And if you would like to be registered for cycle six. So if those are your answers, please vote yes, yes and yes. And we will make sure that you are contacted um, very soon. Um, there's more questions for from Mark. Um, he says, what is the maximum term to complete and costs, please? Okay, so Mark, so the maximum depends on if you are an RPL student or are you a BCom student. If you are in a, a BCom student and you've been um, admitted as a, on the, 
on the full qualification, your duration would be 18 to 18 months to two years. If you are admitted via RPL, it would be two years. Cost currently is um, 1,007, uh, oh, sorry, 7,140 Rand per module. Um, unfortunately, our cost does increase every year. So annually, we, there is a cost increase. Unfortunately, I'm not, that has not been made available to us as yet for 2023. I think it's also just important um, just to mention that even though you um, have two years to complete the qualification, we do have a certain time period that you can go over. Go over. Um, what if you can maybe just give us an indi indication of um, the time limits there in terms of you cannot not study for longer than what time, what period of time? Uh, longer. So the qualification, the minimum duration is one year, as we say, and the maximum is three years. So that is the duration for postgrad qualifications. Okay. Um, and then Mark has another question. Mark is saying four subjects plus case study in 18 months. Remember, this is seven qualifications that, or seven modules that you need to complete, not, not five as four plus one. It's seven modules on this qualification. Um, so, okay, the next question there is if there's any courses after this to get to a master's. So, because the postgrad diploma is on uh, NKF level eight, that is similar to an honours degree. So, if you have got a BCom degree, you can move on to a master's degree. Uh, currently, there is nothing um, as such as a master's degree in financial planning. So, your master's degree would then be um, more likely, if you've got a law degree, it will be in law, or your master's degree, if you've got a BCom, it will be in one of the BCom um, ranges. Cool. I'm not seeing any more questions on our Ask a Question box, and um, I don't know if I feel like we have... Um, answered Mark. Mark, if you have um, voted on the poll that you'd like to get more information, you will be contacted and someone will be able to um, to answer you specifically to your questions and advise you further. So um, please be, be on the lookout for our email and um, a phone call from Mill Park. So um, ladies, that was... Uh, 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 a good but hard session, thanks to load shedding, but I think um, you, you guys did super well, so thank you for that, and I'd like to thank everyone that has joined us. Um, Brunilda, Wadi, I don't know if you guys have any closing remarks before um, we save people more time, and, um, and yeah, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to say before we we close our session. Thank you very much, Simala. Just from my side, we look forward to having all of you on our cycle six and uh, to walking you walking the journey with you in your learning experience. Thank you very much. Yeah, and thank you for making the time to um, to come and listen to our presentation. And yeah, we we are hoping to see you soon. Thank you. Awesome. Um, and for those who would like to watch the recording again, the recording is available. You can use the same link that you use to register. The, the recording will stay here. You can just click on the link and you'll be able to watch. And from what we will also do on our marketing side is that we will resend the link for those people who, did, who missed the session um, to send them the recording to say, hey, come watch and um, and we take it from there. And if you guys have anyone who think who, who you guys think will benefit would have benefited from this session, so that they can listen um, to the recording. And if they need more information, they can be able to contact us via email, via our phone calls. We're ready to um, partner with you on your learning journey. So from me. 
and from the um, financial planning and insurance ladies. Um, thank you very much for joining us this morning and goodbye.